Amen. Uh, just greet someone next to you and say something positive, something that will cheer them up today. Amen. I'm glad you are here. I'm glad you glad you are here, you three. Yeah, cheer somebody today. Someone may be feeling low today, but your word will comfort them. Hallelujah. Uh, let us just let let me pray. <clears throat> Father, I thank you. I thank you that you bless each person who is here today. And may the time of worship strengthen our faith, renew our hope and deepens our love for the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We are just going to stand up and worship our first song, amen. Let's Good morning, everybody. Let's all stand and let's sing our first song. I'll praise in the valley, praise on the mountain.
Hallelujah. Powerful, powerful. This morning, whatever situation you are going, you have to praise the Lord. It says in Psalms 47, 6 to 7, sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing to him a psalm of praise. So this morning we are singing. We know that when we worship, God is always with us. You have to sing with joy. You have to sing with passion. And you need to sing with your heart. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Just go to our next song. Yeah. Let's praise the Lord together. My Jesus, I love thee.
right now but God is always God whatever challenges you are going through God will always be there for you God will always comfort you in Psalms 100 uh, verse 3 it says know that the Lord is God it is he who made us and we are his we are his people so this morning we know that we are God's people Whatever you are going through, you know, God is always there for you. God is always by your side. Whatever, you know, that God answers prayers. And we know that delay is not denial. There's a time and season for everything. And God is always there for you. There's your season which will be coming soon. And don't compare your situation with someone next to you. God's favor is always different. God favors you according to you not according to some, but by your side. God always loves you. Amen. Amen. Yeah, hallelujah. Uh, okay, one song. Okay, so now we uh, hand over to Steve so that he can do the Holy Communion. Good morning, all. Say it every time. God's good, isn't he? Yeah. Remains good. I've had a word on my mind all week, and it's been the word new. And it's, uh, and it's things that popped up in, in various readings that I've had. But isn't it good that God makes things new? I've I, um, been working on the kitchen with the wife this week, and I woke up this morning, and my 
back of my legs are aching, whatever. I could just do with being made new. Our car broke down on Thursday, and so we were left stranded, and I prayed seven to, several times that the Lord would make the car new. Yes. Useless thing. <laughs> but God's good, isn't he? He remains good all the time. And, and, and I say I was reading the Bible, and it, and it was in Revelation 21, and it says, Behold, I am making all things new. Brand new. I, I, I like watching... Um, some antique shows, I think there's one called Salvage Hunters, I don't know if anybody's, and Hannah's nodding at me, because I have it on all the time. And also like Salvage Hunters, The Restorers, have you ever seen that, anybody? Sad enough to admit to it. Where they take a complete wreck of something, don't they? Completely destroyed, completely useless. In fact, I often wonder if I've got things in the house that you've thrown away, that you could have been worth a fortune. But they take it to these restorers, and they make it like new. It's amazing. It's amazing how they do it. So we're going to go into communion. And what's that got to do with anything? Well, you know, God makes us new. I don't know what kind of week, week that you've had. I've told you a few things that have happened in my week. But God makes things brand new. And that includes your heart, your soul, your life, whatever it is. You might be feeling really, really rubbish. You might be thinking, that how could anybody like this wretch, as I think it was Paul who called himself a wretch in the Bible, because you feel useless. But I want to tell you that Jesus makes us new, and it's new through the power of his blood. And we're reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. It says, For the love of Christ controls us, because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, that those who might live might live no longer live for themselves but for him who for their sake died and was raised from now on therefore we regard no one according to the flesh even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh regard him thus no longer therefore if anyone is in Christ therefore if anyone is in Christ therefore if anyone is in Christ he is a new creation the old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against him. Thank you. And entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. If I could have the service come forward, we'll say we're going to take communion, but I want to allow you just to have time before we, we take the emblems, just to have a, a prayerful moment with God and just thank him that he's made you new. Thank you, thank him that he's forgiven us our sins. It was, it was once for all, for all our sins. So I say, if I can have the servers come forward. Thank you. steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that as we come around the communion this morning, we do it in remembrance. And Lord, we will one day take these communions and these emblems with you and you in heaven, Lord. And such, you said you wouldn't drink of this again until you drank it in you in heaven with your father. And we just pray, Heavenly Father, that as we just consider our lives this morning, as we consider our circumstances, whatever we're in, however ragged we feel, however broken, however cracked, I just pray, Heavenly Father, that you pour in your love, your kindness, and your spirit. And help us to remember what your blood means and what this bread means as we partake in it, Lord. We partake in what you did for us on the cross, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise you, Lord.
Once again. 
stand together as we sing this and make this declaration of thanks to God. what Steve said before. He said about me, made all things new. Does anyone else need something in their body made new today? Some of you, maybe this stuff out of alignment in your body and it's not quite right. And as we're singing it there, we're singing, thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. You know, number one, Jesus can wash away our sins. But number two, we see sing an old song and there's power, power, wonder working power in the blood. And because Jesus died for you, we believe that Jesus broke the curse of sin. And for those of you who may be new to church today, you go, what am I talking about? Google it. You'll find out. No. I want to encourage you to look into it because it talks about the fact that Jesus' blood is powerful. You can pray for the person next to you in the name of Jesus, by the power of the blood of Jesus. And I believe we'll see miracles. I believe we'll see breakthrough in situations. I want to encourage you just for a moment. Put your hands out towards the person next to you. If you don't know them, ask them if you can put your hands on their shoulder. They may have a phobia of it, okay. And I want you just to pray today, a serious point. I want you to pray Jesus' blood over them. Say, Jesus, I don't know their situations, but I know that your blood is powerful. I know that you can make all things new, as Steve shared there. You can transform situations. Lord, and I pray, whatever my friend next to me is facing, Whatever situations they're going through, Lord, whether they're spiritual, whether it's a sin issue, you pray for it, Lord. Whether it's a physical issue and they need healing today, let's pray Jesus, let's pray the blood of Jesus over them. Say, Jesus, we pray healing today. We pray the applied blood of Jesus on them, Lord. We'd see breakthrough right now, Jesus. Oh, Lord. I was a wretch, I remember who I was. I was lost, I was blind, I was running out of time. Sin separated, the bridge was far too wide. But from the far side of the chasm, 
you hand me in your sight so you made a way across the great divide left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside and then at the cross you pay the debt I owed broke my chains freed my soul for the first time communion uh, at this moment i can ask jane you want to give an announcement about yeah oh my days how do you follow that yeah I, i'll tell you what when i was singing the the blood the song and um, i was a wretch i remember what i was like well i was a wretch i remember what i was like I remember I was, well, a completely different person to whom I am today, and I do owe that to God. Um, I don't know where I'd be today, I don't know who I'd be, 
but I certainly wouldn't be the person that's standing in front of you. I am, I can't tell you how grateful I am to God. I just, it was just, it was there in a flash and it's just, I kind of, just so grateful for what he's done in my life. So if anybody else is here and thinking you're a wretch or, you know, there's something going on and you, you're thinking God can't love you, can't, can't use you, God can't change you, anything like that, maybe none of you think like that. But if you do, honestly, he really can if you trust him. It's not been an easy journey for me anyway. It's certainly not been an easy journey. It's been very, very tough. However, um, yeah, I wouldn't have wanted to go through all that tough, tough stuff to get where I am today. But uh, I, I can't really explain more than that. Um, how God has changed me. So, um, <clears throat> Right, announcements. Where are the announcements? Eve, where are you? You're doing okay. You're doing on that. Oh, just a Blaze one. Oh, right. Beg your pardon. I thought I was doing others. Okay, so Blaze, I'll tell you the details and then I'll tell you a little bit about it. Okay, so every uh, about three months, we put in the churches in the area have got together. So that's a, a big deal because churches kind of never used to do something together, but they're doing it together now for 11 to 18 year olds. It's called Blaze. Um, so the date is next Saturday. I have sent information out before now. Um, there's going to be a DJ. There's going to be chill and chat at the beginning. Uh, prayer music and worship so it's kind of you know young people's worship it's quite bouncy and all the rest of it there is guest speaker dawny reynolds if you haven't heard dawny oh my days she's a powerhouse um featuring well oh i could uh, one of the girls in the back in the there's a, their own not band their own i don't know what you call what the music is i can't remember uh, hip-hop or something like that i don't know do i'm not in, with all that now but one of the girls, she kind of walked in. They've got, um, oh, there's too much to tell you. Anyway, basically, by uh, knowing the people that are kind of go in, in Blaze, her life has been transformed, and she's now part of this band. Uh, she's got, well, her stories, again, come from brokenness and how God's restored. Um, so it is at... Um, Presence Church, Trinity Street, Hanley, that's quite a new ch church. Six 6.30 it starts, sorry, six, half six till seven, it's the intro and you chill and chat and all that lot. Then it starts seven till half nine. Um, can I just say, since the Blazes have been starting, we've had some amazing feedback. They've actually started with the young people that have been interested and said they, they want to do more and get involved with all sorts of things. They're now doing a year-long leadership course um, uh, and they're going to be doing mission work and be doing real on-your-feet stuff. Plus, one of the youth leaders, he says, I've been a youth leader for 40 years. My youth come to the first one last time, which was here, actually, um, and they said after, the, after that, they, they approached him and said, can we have a youth prayer time, monthly, weekly, or whatever it was, and uh, worship and praise? And ever since then, I mean, getting together and doing that, and all the we've got a lot of feedback of how young people are being transformed and changed, uh, not just through Blaze, but a lot of it through Blaze, and the relationships are then built up with their. The, the kids bring the friends, so they get uh, involved with the church, and then the church uh, kind of loves them and looks after them. So I'd really encourage anybody 11 to 18 to come along. Uh, so, yeah, so parents encourage them as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Jane. We look forward to see as many people as possible on that day. Is Tyrese here? Oh yeah, Tyrese is uh, here to tell us some good news. <laughs> Just to let you know, it's not another coffee morning. <laughs> so, I've, cur I've recently reached my target of 1,700. So, so I'd like to extend the biggest thank you to everyone in this church for helping me throughout my journey. Without you, it wouldn't have been possible and it truly showed me the community we have in this church. 
and I'm forever grateful for all you've given me and the help you've all given to me. So thank you very much. Can you tell me more briefly, 30 seconds, what you're doing, Tyrese, for those who are visiting today? So, on, we go out on the 26th of October. So, my school, we do, we work with some charities around the world. So, with the charities, we have a Christian Brother Foundation in Sierra Leone. So, I was chosen to go, and we go to primary schools, orphanages, secondary schools. We see the disparities in the communities. We help to bring some education, some supplies and clothes into these schools. And then all the money we raise goes to help sustain these villages and schools for the year. We give them money for schooling, food, shelter, and then this is like cyclic. So then next year, the next group goes and do the same thing. So we help sustain these communities. Can we just stretch our hands towards Tyrese and pray for him? Amen. Father. Father, we thank you. We give you glory, honor, and adoration. Father, we pray for Tyrese this morning, Father. You know what his desires are, my Father. You know what he's wishing for, Father. I pray that you continue to bless him, meet him at the point of his need, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray that as he go on this mission, Lord, you continue to protect him, my Father. We know there are so many things happening out there, Father, but protect him, Father. There shall be no accidents. There shall be no food poisoning. But give him strength, my Father. Re renew his strength every day, my Lord, and comfort him, my Father. And this missionary work he's doing, my Father, is not going to end here, my Lord, but he will continue to do good things in his life, my Father. I, Lord, I pray that you continue to bless him every day, Lord Jesus. Continue to give him wisdom and understanding, Father. And I pray that you continue to be a role model to other youth, Lord. I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank, you. <laughs> thank you. He's leading by example. So we just pray that you continue to do that. And you'll be a role model to each and everyone who is here. Uh, so at this moment, I'll ask the big fish and the small fish to go at their places. And our future leaders, Cornerstone, and pastor is going to give us a word this morning. And I pray that his word is going to bless you. I pray for spiritual ears and spiritual eyes this morning. That as you hear pastor's word, it's going to bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Good morning, everyone. Turn to the person next to you and say, please don't fall asleep for the next half an hour. Okay, hopefully we're going to stay with us today. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay, a couple of very quick announcements just before I bring my word as the kids and young people head out. First one is next weekend is our Harvest Sunday. There we go. Always a great time. So we're going to support the local food banks. I know there's some people who still wish you could bring fresh loaves of bread and fresh fruit. But only what hap normally happens is it goes smelly at the front of church. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to support our local food bank again. So next week, if you are able to bring in some long life products, like long life milk, um, not tins of baked beans. We always say this because a lot of people don't like baked beans and everyone gives food bank baked beans. OK, but they really love milk, long life milk, especially and tin vegetables. And if we're able to bring them throughout the week and next Sunday, we're going to um, put, a put a thing on the table to celebrate everything God's given us. Then. Um, Next announcement is also next weekend is our prayer weekend. So we're going to have a, we have a service here. We're going to have a service where we seek God. It's 7 o'clock next Friday evening here. We seek God normally, but this is a time where we want to listen to God. We want to come into God's presence. Um, and we want to, we've, God has given out so many prophetic words on our Friday night prayer times, gatherings once a month. And I would encourage you, get along. If you don't normally go to a prayer meeting, that is the prayer meeting to get to. Beginning of the year, it was cold. The heating wasn't working properly. Me and Pastor Ravine looked at each other and went, how long do we call this prayer meeting off? Before we finished, we prayed. For, we had, I felt a word that God wanted some people to pray to move houses. And they need a breakthrough with their houses. Four people put their hands up. And they said, we, we're, Pastor, we're praying about a house. Nothing's happening with our house moving. Those four people came forward. We prayed for them. Three months later, every single one of those guys had bought a new house and had moved. God moves, doesn't he? 
When we pray together, so I want to encourage you, don't just do it because you want to get something. You want to praise God as well, but get along. Sign up, um, elam.family forward slash prayer. Sign up for a half an hour prayer slot next weekend as well. After the service, we have our student lunch. Yes. So if you're like 80 years old and you're not at uni, please don't come along. Okay. It's for anyone who's in post-16 education. We've got Fabian and Ricardo have been preparing amazing food for us. So we're going to be having our grub after here. So if you're a student, please stay along for that one too. A couple of exciting things to share with you there as well for those who are coming in. And the final thing is this um, announcement to bring in two weeks' time on the 20th. Um, we've got what we call our welcome meal. Um, over the last year, it's been sort of since last September, it's been a lot of people join our fellowship, become part of our church family. And you hopefully will be getting a letter if you've given us your details. If you haven't given us your details, we'll try and get you a letter. But it's a chance for us after the service just to have what we call a newcomer's lunch. We love you old comers as well. Okay, we love you just as much. But it's a chance for them just, if those who've started coming to our church the last year, just to sit down, have a chat with us, have a meal, and get to know us a little bit better. So if you have been coming, started coming to the church um, in the last year, and you want to know more about that, please come and speak to me, Michelle, or Pastor Praveen, and we'll get it. And on that note, just very briefly, very quickly, has anyone heard of GDPR? Put your hands up if you've heard of GDPR. Okay. In our church, we want to love you guys all the best we can possibly love you. But we have a little thing called GDPR that we have to be cautious of. So if you come along to our church, and if you've been coming along to our church for a while, and you haven't given us your details, please can you come speak to myself, Michelle, or go on our website, you'll see sign up. Please can you give us your details? Why is it important? Because some days we want to invite people to come share a testimony or to share up here. You might have got hold of my number and WhatsApp me. I then have to go to the palaver of saying, is that number on what, in our database? No, it's not on our database. Well, I'm not allowed to give that person my number. Some of you think it's stupid, but there's some pastors where the congregation have got angry with them and threatened to report them to the GDPR police. Okay, so if you haven't signed up and you've been part of our church, it means that, for example, if, we, if you're not well or something else, we can look after you and we can pastorally care for you. So please make, it's not just about getting emails, it's about us just signing, getting you on and connected on. So please, please, please do that. Because we love you, we want to be able to love you, and it's really hard to love you when you've got to make 50 phone calls around the place to try and figure out if we can have permission to do it. Is that person friends on Facebook or that person, are they not? And we work it out, and eventually we get around it. But if you could sign up on our website, that would be amazing. And if you don't know if you've signed up, come have a chat. We can find out. Brilliant. Well, come to you on a message now. So... I'm sharing today um, about a guy called Caleb, who is one of my favorite guys um, in the Bible. I have a lot of favorite guys in the Bible, but I love Caleb so much so, in fact, that if my oldest daughter had come out a boy, she would have been called Caleb. And much to my in-laws' disgust, because they didn't like that name, but I loved it. And when my in-laws told me they didn't like that name, I thought, if it's a boy, dead right, I'm going to call him Caleb. Okay. <laughs> But one of the best things um, to come out of the pandemic, there was a lot of bad things to come out of the pandemic, but one of the best things to come out of the pandemic is the fact that you have to book everything. I think it's so good. I know for those of you who are spontaneous, um, and you hate it, but for those who like me, who like a bit of order in your life and like to plan out, I love the fact you've got to book everything. And the thing that I love most about been having to book now is I can now book when I get my hair cut. There used to be this thing, I know ladies, you didn't really suffer this as much, but if you're a bloke, you'll understand this pain. You need your hair cut, you turn up to the barbers. Reason I turn up to the barbers is because I don't trust my wife doing my hair. And so I always have to pay someone else to do it. And I'd go into the barbers and you have this feeling, you look and you know your hair needs to be cut. And you sort of work out how many barbers there are. One, two, three, four, five. And then you count how many people are waiting in the barber room. Do any men understand what I'm talking about? Yeah, and you understand, you're going in. So the one day I walk into the barbers, and this is a good barber. I had a bad barber. I had this one lady, and she cut my hair. I got home, and I had this big tuft of hair sticking up randomly in the middle there. And I was like, I'm going to go try a different barber. 
so I've managed to find this barber who was good. And I walked in there and he'd cut my hair once and it wasn't too bad, it was a bit of a wait. And I looked and there was two barbers in the barber chair. And then one of the barb, there's five people, I'm thinking, okay, just clock a few little bits, this won't take too long. Then what happens, one of the barber gets up and goes. And I start to panic, because I'm thinking, this is bad news for me, because there's so many people coming in. And after an hour of waiting, I'd been there, I still hadn't had my hair cut. And there were still three people in front of me who needed their hair cut before I needed my hair cut. And I thought to myself, Jim, you've got a really busy day. You need to get your hair cut. So you've given up an hour of your life waiting. What's another 20 minutes? 20 minutes later came. There were still three people in front of me. People came to the door and I thought, is this another barber to help me? No. Two hours came. And you know you get to that moment when you've been waiting for something for two hours. You think to yourself, well, I've waited for two hours, for goodness sake. At least I've got, I'm going to get near the front. And there's still a person in front of me. I thought, at least I'm going to be seen too. Just under three hours, I finally got seen for the barber. And as I'm waiting, there was a sign on the barber's wall. It says something to the effect of, if you've got to wait for the barber, it means it's a good barber that you're waiting for. I didn't believe that one little bit. And I got to the front and eventually I got my hair cut. And as I'm sitting in the chair, the barber turns around and he says to me, why did you wait so long? I'm not that good. And I'm thinking, great. But I'm one of those guys. I hate waiting for something. But at the same time, I know that if it's worth waiting for, it's worth waiting for. I could have gone down to the other barbers and got a haircut where my hair would have been sticking up in random directions. It sticks up random directions anyway, but even worse than normal. But sometimes, as Guinness, a Guinness advert used to say, good things come to those who wait. Say it next to us and next to you. Good things come to those who wait. And I want to just, the Caleb is an example of good things happening to someone who waits. And sometimes you have to wait. And sometimes things don't happen as quickly as you want them to happen. And sometimes you've got to go through that process of just waiting. And for some of you, you might be sitting here today, and God might have given you a promise years ago that you've never seemed to come to fruition, and you're still waiting. Some of you, you've got a deep longing and desire in your heart to see some things happen, and you're still waiting. The problem is that when we're waiting, we can sometimes feel like it's wasted time. And I want to look at a guy today, Caleb, as I've already said. And Caleb was a guy who had to wait 45 years to see God's promise come into fruition. Now, guys, I'm not even 45 years old, okay? It's longer than my lifetime that Caleb had to wait to see God's promise happen in his life. And he's one of the most inspiring men in the Bible. And if you're following in your Bible, I encourage you to do it. We first meet him in Numbers 13. And we have those who are catching up in the story. We have Moses and the Israelites. And Moses had helped the Israelites escape from um, slavery in Egypt. They were wandering around the desert and bathed for, for a long time. And basically, God says to Moses, Moses, I want you to send 12 people, 12 spies, to go to the promised land, the land that I'm going to give you. And I want you to go and get them to have a look at that land. And basically, I think what God was thinking is, if these spies go to this land that he's going to give them, they're going to look at this incredible land, and they're going to say, wow, it's amazing. The guys went to the land. It was amazing. But only two of them thought that they could go and capture this land that God had promised them. Only two of them, oh my goodness, there we go, bit of a nice big clang there. Only two of them thought that God was able to get to that promise that he'd promised them. One of them was called Joshua, and the other one was Caleb. And because of Caleb's amazing faith, um, he managed to become only two Israelites who got into the land of Canaan. And look how he was described here in Numbers 14, verse 24. It says this. This is God talking. He says, but because my servant David, as a Caleb, has a different spirit and follows me wholeheartedly, I will bring him into the land he went to, 
and his descendants will inherit it. Look at the two words I've just highlighted there. Because my servant Caleb, can we say this together, had a different spirit and follows me wholeheartedly. Imagine if God has described you as somebody who has a different spirit and who follows him wholeheartedly. I would love that over my life. Wouldn't you love that over your life? And this is what God, how God described Caleb. He said he's something different about him. He's a different spirit about him. There's something different and he follows me wholeheartedly. This happens when Caleb was about 40 years old. And this bit about the different spirit and following God wholeheartedly never left him. We're going to skip forward 45 years now. So if you're following in your Bible, we're now jumping from Numbers 14 to Joshua chapter 14. And this is what it says. As we're picking up the story a bit later on. Moses has died. Caleb and Joshua have managed to get into the land where God has promised them. They're winning loads of battles. Things are going really well, actually. And this is what happens. It says this. Now the people of Judah approached Joshua and Caleb and said to him, You know what the Lord has said to Moses about you and me. I was 45 years when um, I was 45 year, 40 years old even when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me to explore the land. I brought him back a report according to my convictions, but my fellow Israelites went who went up with me made the hearts of the people melt in fear. I, however, followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly, so that on the day Moses swore to me. The land which your feet have walked on will be your inheritance and that of your children forever because you have followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. And here is Caleb a little bit later on. He's 85 years old, so he's not a spring chicken anymore. He's, wa he's waited 45 years for God to answer his prayers. You know, some people stop coming to church when God doesn't answer their prayer after a week. And here's Caleb, 45 years God has made this promise to him. 45 years he's been waiting for God. And so he's 85 years old and he's still waiting for his promise of God to come to fruition. That is a long time. But look at that word that appears again, that Caleb can say hand on heart. He said this, I, however... Followed the Lord my God, let's say it together, wholeheartedly. 85 years old. And he was still could say hand on heart that he followed God wholeheartedly. He didn't follow God busily. He didn't follow God hurriedly. He didn't say, well, I went to church every single day. You know, none of that. He just followed God wholeheartedly. He didn't follow God because everyone else was doing the same. He didn't follow God vainly to get what he wanted to. He didn't follow God habitually, but he followed God wholeheartedly. He was completely committed to God. You know, the other day I was at a meeting and we had a, it was a meeting of ministers and we had a time when people were sharing what they feel God was saying. And this one guy comes up to the front and he was talking, he said this, he said, can I ask you a question? He said, God's asking me. He says, are you relying on God every single day or are you doing everything in your own strength? And I was like, oh, I really wish that person hadn't stood up and asked that question. Because when we rely, when we follow God wholeheartedly, we know that we can put our trust in him. We know that we can put our faith in him. Am I following God with everything inside of me? If I'm not, it simply starts by saying, God, I want to follow you wholeheartedly. It means prioritizing him. And Caleb was following God completely. And he knew he was following God completely. And Caleb then comes up to Joshua in this passage. And he reminds Joshua of the promises God had made. You know, sometimes in church, we have this false humility. We sort of say, well, God, I'm not going to be used unless somebody comes up and asks me that question. Who's ever said that before? Don't put your hands up, okay? There's a few of you maybe do it. I'm only going to do stuff for God if someone else asks me to do it. Guys, give your head a wobble, okay? 
You need to be proactive sometimes about this. And Caleb was proactive. And Caleb, he loves God and he, he knew what God wanted was going to happen. And he is proactive. Look what he says. In verse, look what happens in verse 10. It says, now then, just as the Lord promised, he has kept me alive for 45 years since the day he said this to Moses. While Israel moved about in the wilderness, so here I am today, 85 years old. I'm still as strong today as the day Moses sent me out. And I'm just as vigorous to go into battle now as I was then. Now give me this hill country that the Lord has promised me that day. You yourself heard that, the, heard that then that the Anakites were there and the cities were large and fortified. But the Lord helping me, I will drive them out, just as he says. I love this. Because how many of you are over 85 years old? Put your hands up. There we go. I love it. Imagine... Stewie, you've got to say this. This is a verse for you, okay? <laughs> but I love this. Because Caleb's there. He's been waiting 45 years. We've got to realize the land that God's going to give him has got really big, strong people. It's got fortified cities. This isn't an easy project. And at 85 years old, he turns around and says, well, God's with me. I'm going to do it. How many of you at the age of 60 have turned around and go, I'm retiring now. Whew. That's it. God's finished with me. Because uh, it's crazy, isn't it? And Caleb's here, and he's vigorous. He's like, I'm gonna, some guys are 30, and they look like old men, okay? And Caleb's here at 85 years old saying, I'm going to take everything God's got for me. Do I hear an amen from you older folk? Some of you are like, oh, no, Pastor. I love this. He says, yeah, this is a quite a claim to fame here, quite a, quite a statement. He says, I'm just as strong now as I was when I was 40. For Caleb, there wasn't a retirement in pursuing God. He had a view that he was alive that day for a reason and that God had kept him alive for a reason. Eve didn't do it today, but Eve normally starts her services by starting and saying this, listen, be thankful to God today that you woke up because so many people didn't. If you woke up this morning, God has a plan for you. God has a purpose for you. You didn't just wake up just to exist. Say to the person next to you, you didn't wake up just to exist. Some of you need to know this. Some of you need to hear this today, okay? Because sometimes whatever age we are, whether we're 85 or whether we're 17, whether we're 18, whether we're 35, some days we go through that motion of just existing, 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 but you weren't, you didn't wake up this morning just to exist. God kept kept you alive for this moment for a reason and for a purpose. Caleb here, 85 years old, says, I'm as strong as I was when I was 40 years old. God has called me here today, alive for, my, for a purpose, and I'm going to live out that purpose. And I'm going to do everything that God has promised me. He didn't care that the areas that God was going to give him needed conquering. He didn't care because he knew who his God was. And he says this, with the Lord helping me, I will drive them out just as he says. You know what, if you're a student here today, and we've got our students, student tour, going, give me a big clap, big welcome to all the students, give me a big clap today. Welcome guys. But if you're here, I wanna say this now, God hasn't brought you to Kiel just so you can survive getting through a degree. God's got a promise. I don't mind staff's uni, sorry staff's unis. <laughs> My wife's a Kiel student, she told me staff's university doesn't exist. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out. Terrible. But if he brought you to Staffs Uni or Kiel Uni, he hasn't brought you here just to sit through your degree. If you're here and you're an OAP, God hasn't finished with you yet. He's kept you alive so you can take territory for the kingdom of God. Don't forget the promises that you're holding on to. If you're here and your life involves going to work and coming home, or maybe, and all you do is go to work, come home, come home, doom scroll for three hours, go to bed, wake up, go to work, come home, doom scroll for three hours, go to work. Is you know what I mean? Some of you, you're smiling to the person next to you because you know that's true. God has got a greater purpose for you. Stop scrolling and start following him wholeheartedly. And I want to quickly, I say quickly, no one ever trusts me with my quickly. 
I want to blast through five things now that I think we can learn from Caleb. That was just my introduction. But I'm going to shoot through these. Five things that I think we can learn from him. So number one, Caleb kept following God wholeheartedly. Can we say this together? Caleb kept following God wholeheartedly. This is so important. Guys, I want to say this to us now. Stop trying to get God to fit into your schedule and start fitting into God's schedule. When you follow someone wholeheartedly, you rejig stuff around to fit in with them. You know, there's a member of my family, and, um, and what do you call it? The other day, I went to phone them, and they didn't answer the phone. And I'm like, okay. Then I phoned them again. They didn't answer the phone. And I noticed they said, oh, yeah, I might be busy in a couple of weekends' time. Why? Because they've fallen in love. <laughs> what happens when people fall in love? Their schedules change so quickly. Have you ever noticed that? I'm busy all of a sudden. And suddenly these guys who have always fitting in everyone else's schedules, suddenly their life, nothing else matters. They drop it to fit into the young lady's schedule, okay? Some of you guys know what I'm talking about. You know you do it, okay? I'll do anything to change it. I remember when I started dating Naomi, we were 16 years old. I was supposed to go off on this youth thing and I canceled. I said, I can't go. Why couldn't I go? Because I was worried I wouldn't be able to speak to her every night on the phone. How pathetic is that? Okay. But we've all been there. But why? But when you follow someone wholeheartedly, when you love someone wholeheartedly, when you're like, yes, you change your schedule to fit around them, don't you? And guys, this is the first thing we need to do is we need to follow God wholeheartedly, not to say, God, I want you to fit into everything that I want in my life, but actually, God, I want to fit into everything you have. And when you do that, you follow him wholeheartedly. God may have a better plan than you. I often share this, but a few years ago, about two or three years ago, I woke up every morning, and the first thing I would do when I wake up was I'd check out the latest football gossip. Okay, see who Blackburn Rovers might sign. And it was never, no one ever cares about them anymore. They never appear on there anyway. Then the next thing I'd do is I'd check the news headlines. Then I would go and I'd check out Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. And I worked out, you know what, great Jim. So God's really, really important to you and he's number fifth on your list. So what I do now, when my alarm clock goes off, the first thing I do is I read a passage of scripture. Why? Because I want God to be the first thing in the morning who speaks to me. It's about making those changes. When I start my work day, I'm a pastor so I can get away with this. Don't try to tell your boss you need half an hour to pray. But my work day, first thing I do now is I've got half an hour to pray to God, to seek him and spend time with him. Why? Because it's important. It's not just important. You don't just get the pastor here to be the good Christian you can't be. Okay. This is for all of us to do, to put him number one. If you are doom scrolling first thing in the morning, doom scroll on the Bible app instead, okay? Be proactive about it. Use those tips. My desire is to see God advance across this region, to see his kingdom advance. But the first thing is going to start is by all of us wholeheartedly following him. Our vision in this church is to raise up devoted disciples of Jesus. When you're devoted, you follow Jesus wholeheartedly. The next thing is this, is Caleb didn't stop moving. Can we say this together? Caleb didn't stop moving. You might have heard this, but when a stone is rolling, so it's easier to direct a stone that is moving than to start a stone from a stationary place. And guys, sometimes we sit there and... Um, Caleb, I can imagine Caleb going, you know what? Oh, God's got a promise for me. It's okay. Sit on a chair and do absolutely nothing. Years ago, I had a good friend of mine, and they had this prophetic word over their life. And the prophetic word was, they were, they, someone said, I see you going to Holland when you're 22 to preach. They were 18 years old. The first thing they said was, that's brilliant. I said, yeah. She said, do you like Holland? They said, no. It means it's guaranteed I'm going to be alive when I'm 22. <laughs> and actually, the problem is sometimes we hold, I say these promises of God's going to do this, God's going to do that. Hey, great. I'm going to sit back and do nothing. But you need to be proactive about this. 
You know, Caleb was proactive. Caleb kept pushing people towards God. He kept pursuing the things of God. He didn't say, listen, I've waited 20, 21 years for this promise. It's not going to have to fruition. I'm going to sit back and do nothing. Caleb helped the Israelites drive out the Canaanites. Guys, you need to keep moving forward. Not to sit still and hope that God might do things, but keep doing things in preparation for what God is going to do. The next thing is this. Caleb looked after himself and stayed healthy. Let's say this together. Caleb looked after himself and stayed healthy. Caleb, 85 years old, as I've shared already, and he turns around and says, I'm just as strong as I was when I was 40. How many of us can say that? Not everyone, because our problem is our bodies are decrepit, health problems come in, different things set in. Um, I keep reminding my wife, my wife had her birthday on Friday, okay, and so I won't tell you how old she is, but next year she's 40, and um, <laughs> so it was quite interesting, and I, I have a reputation in my family for sending out cards a year earlier to wind people up. I didn't do it this time, but all of her colleagues sent her 40 birthday cards this year, because someone made the joke about it, and then, um, but you know what, I, I'm, I'm hitting 40 next year, and I, I remember when I was um, heading into 20, I remember heading into 30, and I think I can honestly say today that I'm fitter going into 40 next year than I was when I came into when I was turned 20 and when I turned 30. Not everyone can say that, and reason, reason this, I came to a moment when, I, first of all, when I was a student, I lost a lot of weight when I was 18 years old, because I was like this big blob that walked around everywhere, and my kids say, Dad, can we see your fat photos, please, please, please? <laughs> So we do that, and I went through a bit, and then I ended up a bit of an eating disorder, so I had to be a bit sensible. And then I started living with a couple of guys. You know the guys who can eat like horses and not put any weight on? So I ate like a horse with them, but I exploded, and they got sort of thinner. And then I wasn't healthy. And then when I came up to 30, I remember I said, you know what, I'm going to take up running. I'm going to do a half marathon. I kept saying I'd do a half marathon. I never did one until I was about 35, I think it was, 34. But I, kept, I looked at my kids one day, and I said this. I said, I need to be able to play with my kids and be healthy for my kids. So what am I gonna do today that makes a difference so I'm gonna be around long, longer, longer for my kids? Now, I'm not in control of illnesses that I can get, but I'm in control of my fitness and I'm in control of my health. So because I wanna see my kids flourish and I want it to be a good example to my kids, that's why I started to look after myself a lot more. And Caleb says, yeah, he says this. He says, I'm healthier now than I was. Basically, I'm just as healthy now. And I want to just really encourage you. This is not like a beat you up, everyone join Slimming World. I'm not going to advertise the Slimming World next week or anything like that. But there is a group that meet down in our Cornerstone Community Center on a Thursday. But no. But actually, get yourself in a place where you can see the things of God happen. You know, I wonder how many people have missed out because they didn't look after themselves. Guys, God can use our bodies. I did a thesis on why people aren't healed. And one of the main reasons why people aren't healed is because people don't look after their bodies. It's true, isn't it, sometimes? Not every time, so please don't come up to me. I guarantee someone's going to come up to me afterwards and go, Pastor, I've got this issue, I've got that issue. I'm not asking you about your issues. It's between you and God. But try and be healthy as much as you can to see the things of God come into fruition. The next thing is this. Caleb kept remembering what God says. Let's say this together. Caleb kept remembering what God says. You know, I've had some prophetic words over my life. I've had some words that are spoken. I really believe in the gifts of prophecy still today. And I've ones that I've tested and lined up, okay, with what God is saying. But these moments when I've been a pastor and I've wanted to quit... Naomi knows when I want to quit because you look at my Google search engine and I've searched every single job that could be going. And those moments when I've wanted to quit, and there's been times and situations where, you know what, I think I'm not going to make it and I'm going to quit. It's in those times that I hold on to the words that God has given me. It's those times when I pray that God will keep me going. When I quit and I want to see the fruition of God's words come true in my life. I want to see the promises that God's made me come into life. But just because God has made you a promise doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get it. Because you could give up before you get there. 
You know, when I'm, I'm doing a half marathon next weekend, me and Naomi are doing a half marathon together. I'm not allowed to run, run with her because she verbally abuses me when we go running, when I try and encourage her. But there's a thing about this. There's a, there's a thing you get at the end. If you do any marathon medals, I've got my marathon medals on, the, on my desk. My daughter said, Dad, which one did you win? And I don't make any comments to that because I've not won any of them. But when you burn a marathon, you get a participation medal. It's a bit like primary school. Okay, you pay the money for this little bit of bling. There's a promise that if you finish the marathon, you will get the medal. But here's the deal. If you don't make it to the end of the race, you don't get the medal. And there's so many people who nearly get there and they don't quite get there because they've given up just before the end. This is really important for you to remember, some of you today. There was a guy, I still remember him, he's wearing a Port Vale shirt, still praying for him. No, no, he's a great guy. He loved it and he stood up and he went and he was there and we were just coming into the end, Potter's Half, a few years ago. And he was broken at the end and he was just nearly like kneeling down like this, I can't do it. And I looked at him and he was like 20 years younger than me. I thought, connect boy, you can do this. And I said to him this, I went, come on, keep going, keep going. And he was like, oh, I can't do it. It's very dramatic when you've been running for 12 and a half miles. And I said, you can make it. And I said, come on. Then I said this to him. I said, you're just, your next corner, you're going to make it. And he came and he ran with me. And we ran down the slope to finish. And he was such a lovely guy. He wouldn't overtake me because I encouraged him. And he thought I couldn't take my place. And he got to the end. And he said to me, thank you. He said, I wanted to give up, but you helped me get to the end. Guys, you know, when we know other people have got promises, we need to remind each other about what God has said to help people make the end. Final thing here is this, and it is the final thing, so breathe. Is this, Caleb claimed the promises God had made. Now, I just want to clarify something here. I'm not one of these, you blabber and grabbers, so please don't go outside to anyone who's got a Mercedes, put your hand on it and claim it in the name of Jesus. That doesn't work like that, okay? Unless you're claiming it for me. No, I'm joking. I'm not so keen on Mercedes. I'll have a new Kia. No, I'm joking. But in my house, there's this. When I promise my children something, they do not forget. Does anyone know that experience? Normally what happens is my wife will say, I promised Bethany a hot chocolate tonight, our youngest daughter. And we'll be sitting there at 10 o'clock in the evening and go, she's going to wake up in the middle of the night and going to go, you promised me a hot chocolate and you didn't give it to me. Does anyone else know that experience? Gives you nightmares as a parent. You can't promise them anything anymore. But here it is. Just as my children never let me forget when I have made them a promise, you are God's son and you are God's daughter. Do not let God, do not let God forget the promise he's made for you. Grab hold of it. Keep pushing towards it. Not doing it arrogantly. You don't sit there going, God, do you know who I am? Because I'm like, God, you're much more powerful than me. But do it, holding on, saying, God, remember that promise that you made in my life. Remember that promise that you made. Remember that you, when you promised you were going to do this. God, remember when you promised you were going to do that. Lord, I'm holding on to that promise. Lord, I'm not letting go of that promise. If it's regarding your work, keep holding on to it. If it's a promise about your family, keep holding on to it. You know, we had John Jones, little great-grandson, sitting at the front with me today. And I love John, when he used to sit at the back, my favorite thing once is he prayed this, God, I thank you for my brother who was a Baptist, then he became a Christian and a Pentecostal. Okay, I love that prayer once. He was on fire for Jesus. And Glennis is at the back there. And I remember when he was praying for his family to come in. Remember that, Glennis? I remember when three of his kids were sitting next to him in worship one day. And I thought, I'm still praying for Mark as well. <laughs> but you know what? God came through, and I always remember that. If you're praying for your family, please keep praying for them. Don't forget, don't give up on the promises. Remember, Caleb's promise wasn't going to be easy. He still had to clear the land in front of him. He had to work for it. But Caleb never lost sight of God's promise. And for some of you today, maybe you're in a situation where God has promised you something and you're holding on to it for dear life. <clears throat> Today's the day to keep holding on to it. Today's the day to remind God of that promise. Maybe you want to see God move in your life. 
I want to tell you today, be like Caleb. Start today by saying, God, I'm going to follow you wholeheartedly. I'm going to choose to follow you wholeheartedly. Those of you who are starting uni back this year, choose this year amongst everything you're facing to follow God wholeheartedly. Those of you who are in the process of starting new jobs, promise God, say, God, I'm going to follow you wholeheartedly. Those of you who've got a shift in what's going on in your life at the moment, and maybe a new job, new work situation, all sorts of different situations, say, God, I'm going to choose to follow you wholeheartedly today. Can we stand together? I'm going to invite the band up. Just maybe close your eyes a moment. Maybe here today, and maybe you have come in, and maybe there are some promises that you've almost given up on, stuff that you prayed for, and it feels like it's just not happening. I want to encourage you today to say to God, God, I'm going to keep holding on to that promise. Maybe for some of you, you just need to remind God of that promise every day. Repeat that promise in front of you and say, God, I'm holding on to this promise that you've given me. Guys, you know, I hold on to some promises I shared with some guys this week, some stuff that God spoke to me about four years ago, and I didn't have a clue how this stuff was going to happen, but I knew God had spoke to me about some stuff. And at the time, I felt like a plonk or even believing what God had spoken over me. Guys, you know, I've just seen God in the last few couple of months just make, move, rejig everything, realign everything for that promise to come to fruition in my life. And there's a testimony about that another time. For some of you, you just need to put it today, just say, God, I'm holding on to that promise that you've given me. For some of you today, maybe you are doom scrolling. Maybe your life involves just flicking through social media constantly, Netflix, Disney Plus, work, repeat. Today's the day, just say, God, I'm going to put some of that aside today. I'm going to choose to follow you wholeheartedly. For some of you, maybe compromise has crept in. Maybe you no longer trust that God can come through for you. You know, experience life's being battered you. Stuff's happened to you and you're just like, oh God, I really just, that's it. <laughs> God, I just like, I'm fed up, God. Be like Caleb today and say, God, I'm going to come back to you today. God, I'm going to choose today to make a decision right now. And, if, and for some of you, it might be required, you might need to kneel today as we sing the next song. Some of you might need to just stand with arms open wide just to say, God, I'm just releasing everything to you. I'm submitting to you today. I'm choosing today, Lord, to say, I'm going to follow you wholeheartedly. I want to be like Caleb, Lord, to say at 85 years old that I have followed you. Just wait a moment. Just before we sing our next song, I just want to wait a moment just for you just to have a moment with God. Holy Spirit, we just welcome you into this place. Jesus, Lord, I pray for each person here today, Lord, who that word is spoken to, Lord. Lord, I pray right now that you touch their heart, Lord. Lord, I pray right now that you start to take them into a new season. Father God, I pray for those who are about to give up on that promise that you have made them, Lord. Father God, I pray that their passion will be that of Caleb, Lord. Will grow stronger and stronger right now, Jesus. Lord, I pray for those who need to release stuff right now, Lord. Stuff that stopped them from following you wholeheartedly, Lord. That they will start, Lord, to know what to do when they leave this building today. They will choose to follow you wholeheartedly this morning, Lord. But not just this morning, Lord, as they go out this week, they will follow you wholeheartedly. You will put people around them, like Caleb had Joshua, Lord, and Joshua, Caleb, you'd put people alongside them, Lord, to encourage them, Lord. We pray that in your precious name, Jesus. We're going to sing our last song now, and as we sing our last song, we're going to take up our tithes and our offerings. And if you're a visitor today, please let it go past you. But if you want someone to pray with you afterwards, come give me a shout. We'll get someone to pray with you for certain issues that I've touched on today that resonate with you. Come find me and we'll pray with you. Thanks, Paul.
stretch our hands and pray for the offering. Father, we thank you. We give you honor and adoration. Father, we pray for those who managed to give today. Father, for those who didn't manage to give, Father, I pray that you bless them as they go out and in. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. What a powerful message we heard from Pastor Jim. Uh, I think our health is very important as well. Let's just keep healthy so that we can have more yes. Amen. Uh, you can sit down for once if you want. Thank you, thank you. Uh, just going to pray. Our prayer, hallelujah, let us pray. Glorious Father, loving God, as we leave this place, we carry your word and your presence in our hearts. Thank you for this time of fellowship and worship. May the message we heard today strengthen us as we go through this week, guide our steps, protect us, and help us to live out the faith and love we have shared here today. Empower us to be light in the world, saving others with kindness. We ask for the continued grace and blessings on each person here and their families. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just want to read a verse together, Psalms 23, verse 6. If you can put that on. Psalms 23, verse 6, yeah. Let us all read together. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed week and God will continue to bless you. Amen. Amen. Just to greet someone as we go. Hallelujah. Thank you. Yeah.